back in the locker room with Tunch of Wolf, and we've oh, got uh, Zen. Man. We've got Yogi Zen oh, here, man. and uh, and his butterfly. You got to breathe deep. I'm deeper. stuck. I gotta go. I gotta deep. get this down. Uh, uh, I'm gonna oh, jump on your leg. <laughs> Boy, yeah. yoga. I got enough injuries right now. Fit strength you. and conditioning coach Buddy Morris. Buddy, thanks for joining us. Um, you know, we were talking about athletes today, and uh, uh, and you were talking about your pit guys, and they have a long way to go. Now, when you first got into this business, you had a boatload of gym rats, and I, you know what? I remember the first time we met was we went on strike in '82, and we right, came exactly. down to the pit uh, pit uh, to the pit ironworks to train with you. You had a t you had a bunch of strong guys in there. You know, you know what's great about the old days. And I hate to refer to them as the old days because that makes us old. That's exactly right. right. But um, we are old. When you guys would ship all your equipment to St. Vincent's in the Trobe, all you guys would migrate or matriculate to my weight room. So there right. was you two. You know, there was Webby, there was uh, John Cole, there was Franco Harris, uh, there was Dwight White, and that served for me as a great motivational tool to the athletes I was trying to train because they saw how truly hard and dedicated you guys were. And remember, you guys never stopped training. It was all started at the Red Bull in on right, Route right. 19. The old Red Bull. Oh, you're right there. Oh, yeah. And then, it, you know, it, the stadium and then up to our facility. And it was just a, it was a treat for me to help work with you guys, but even a greater opportunity because the athletes I was training got to see how hard you guys were working at that time. And we had some very, very strong people, you know, like Jim Sweeney, Mark Stepnoski, Bill Frelick. And the list is long. And the, but the thing I'm trying, the greatest thing was their dedication to training. They right. knew how to train. So my biggest problem, another big problem I have with athletes is they don't know how to train. Mm -hmm. They get to the point where it gets to be a little uncomfortable and they want to shut it down. Mm -hmm. And that's not training. The, no, the idea is to push the body. You, you have push to mush. push the body. What's the mush? The mush. That's, you got to push them. You, you crack the, the whip on you them. You got to mush them. Oh, They're I like got you. Sled. sled dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. come on. Hey, pick it up. Well, here. you usually say you hit them in the mush. You're always saying about getting oh, hit in the mush. So okay, I'm gotcha. wondering if you're talking <laughs> no, about No, we're talking about mushing like with sled dogs and stuff. Yeah, you got to push them. You got to push them. Mush. Mush. That's it. Mush. Mush. Would you guys get it right? It's a mush. We got a mush. Uh, but, but they need, you know, they have to be able to push beyond what they could perceive as that pain tolerance. Because let's face it, you'll pass out before you die. Right. Yeah. Good point by you. Yeah. You'll pass out that, before you that, die. That was always one thing. You'll pass out before you die, and they, they, they kill can't, you, but they, they can't, can't eat yeah. you. They can't eat you. Yeah. They can't That's eat you. And, what, and the old cliche, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Okay. There you go. We got three. That's Nitschke. That's three good ones. Yeah. Right. Nitschke. Great linebacker. Maybe we should do our own. Yeah. Well, that's my book. I'll right. do a book on quotes. You're going to do a book? No, I'm not We can book. talk about it on the show. That's right. Now, um, you, you've had, you, you talk about Stepnowski, you talk about Freilich and Jim. Who was the strongest, who was your strongest guy ever? Well, well I'll tell you what. One, somebody really impressed me, and just his ability for pure pressing power. And, and you have to look at his size because he played in the NFL for 14, 15 years. Uh, he only never weighed more than 255 pounds. And, Probably 220 of it was his, his hair, to be honest with you. It was Mark Stepnowski. Uh -huh. Really? Oh, uh, he was unbelievably strong. And then he had, you know, Jim Sweeney to this day has the biggest hands of any oh, human being or man I've ever seen in my entire he was life. Like catcher's mitts. Oh, my God. He's got a yeah. size 18 and a half ring. But Jimmy, and we called him Iron Jim for a reason. Right. Because the kid, the man lived, literally made his, one of those few athletes who literally made himself in the weight room. Yeah. And can you and to believe? Can you believe this? He turned down a scholarship at Indiana State to come to Pitt. <laughs> can you I went to Indiana that? State for one year, and I understand why he turned down. <laughs> <laughs> to Indiana State on Indiana State on a great Wabash Wabash was it Wabash uh, Wabash River? River that's yeah, right. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I went there for one semester time, and I was like, uh, I can't. Could you do this. smell the? Were we there together? Oh, were we, you were there when you know I was what? there. I was there. 80s? When I was there, Larry Bird was a freshman. Danny King was his roommate. That's right. Remember that's right. Danny, Danny King is a guard. That's right. Uh, was his roommate. Yeah. Kurt Thomas was on a gymnastics That's right. team. So you look at three pretty doggone athletes, and then you had tons to the to the mix. You had some pretty good athletes at Indiana State, and you had a we running back named Vincent Allen. Vincent Allen. Are we yeah. talking athletes or football players? Because that, that uh, well, you, you could have a real discussion. We're still talking, at, we're still right. talking athletes. That's but right. I was there probably. Are you I, kidding me? They say he's the first yeah. so non-athlete well, we ever freshman make in the NFL. <laughs> we were freshmen. We had a pipeline to Western Pennsylvania. We were freshmen in '75 together in the fall of '75. I'll be done. You're, you're right. Yeah. You're, you're exactly right. I, I last only one semester, though, Yeah. Two, the academics were a little too much for you, huh? <laughs> and that, that, and the river. One of the finest the academic smell, institutions. The smell of the river. I was like, man. That's right. Is that, or is that the anymore. tire factory it's or whatever? the tire factory. That's what, when but the wind was smelling. There was nothing smelling. to do. Yeah. 
in Terre Haute, Indiana. There's still nothing to do in Terre Haute, Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to do Did in the state finish, of Indiana. Have you been back there? I didn't. I wondered if they finished off the stadium. Uh, yeah, remember they, they, were, they were telling trip. me recruits, they, they, oh, had, they had the one nice side, the concrete side, then they had the like the lumen side. side. Yeah. And they said they were going to build that side like the concrete side. Did and they then were going to horseshoe it. And then there was a steam shovel behind <laughs> it. That steam shovel still there. Trust so me now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Talk no. a little bit now about, uh, let's, let's get back to this year's team. Talk about some of the hard guys, uh, you know, the hard, strong guys you got this year that maybe can lead the way, if there is any. We have another subject? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh! Okay. I, I can know, see. I'm not going to pull no punches. Oh, I'm going to pull no punches. I'm going to tell you, I'm tell you like it is. I appreciate that. I'm going to tell you like it is. We got a lot of work to do. Uh -huh. right? We got a lot of work to do. We need to learn how to train. We need to learn to develop an attitude about training. We need to become unforgiving savages. Because let's face it. Unforgiving savages. Oh, I like it. This game I'm dictates. glad you didn't say that with a list. There's two. <laughs> there's two here, we we, we got to look at workouts from one of two ways. You're either going to survive the workout right. or you're going to conquer it. Right. I don't have enough conquerors right now. Right. Okay. I have survivors. Yeah. The goal is not to survive. The goal is to conquer it. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to be interesting is the 12 weeks in the summer. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the first couple of weeks, everybody's excited. They want to work. Right. But then it becomes a grind. Right. Know? And we're going to grind them this summer. Right. We're, there's going to be guys at the end of this summer who are going to question whether they really want to play the sport or not. But it's the next step we have to take to be successful. And I truly believe that. And we've got a lot of work ahead of us. And they need to understand the value of uh, the volume of work that we have to do. Now, now I, I want to take you back a few years because I remember one summer, I was working with the offensive line in the summer for a good portion of that summer. Now, um, I don't remember anybody surviving those workouts. I remember there were big barrels in the middle of the field. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we and, and cinder blocks yeah, on stadium steps. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember thinking to myself, ooh. Ooh, he'd work them out, and then he then after he'd just totally kill them. He'd give them the mean. I go ahead and play, have these guys, these linemen, start <laughs> just punching. Just do what they can, yeah. And they were like, going, uh, "You got jello." Well, oh, we yeah. just had uh, we just had seven telephone poles delivered. Seven uh, telephone poles. Chris Schneider, who is one of our fullbacks, his father is retired from Duquesne Light. They they delivered up me seven telephone poles, ranging in size from I think 150 to about 300 pounds. I've asked to get two 30-foot telephone poles because I'm gonna lay 10 guys on the ground. So a 30-foot telephone pole across your chest and say, start doing sit-ups. I'm going to find a weak link. Whoa. Who's going to survive and who's going to conquer it? Who's going to be the guy that we have to pick up? <laughs> I'm so, so glad we're retired. Oh, well, no, what's oh. great is my, my assistant that I brought in, our other strength coach is James Smith, but he went through Navy SEAL training. Oh, okay. So there's constantly <laughs> ideas being bounced oh, off each man. of our heads. You know, uh, in our, our offices, we have a grease board, and on the grease board is just ideas. Yeah. And, you know, eventually some point in time ideas. those ideas become reality. Ideas of how to train. Right. You know, the more we learn, the more I learn, the more I say, the more I realize what I really do not know. Mm -hmm. And there's so much more to learn. That's what's fascinating about strength training. You know, that's the thing about it. The older I grow, the more I realize what he doesn't know. <laughs> it's terrific. It's amazing. Hey, real Does quick. he always <laughs> hammer you like this? Or do you always take it? Oh, uh, I'm getting blasted. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting blasted. I'm hey, getting before blasted. we let him go, we got to find out. You're in a bodybuilding contest next week. Huh? Uh, uh, Let's see yeah, a pipe not, shot. No, come on. Not, no Give pipe, pipe shots. Shot. Not oh, nothing. Come on. I, I, I am miserable. I am beaten up. I am hungry right now. Yes. You're going to stand uh, up there pretty near you naked emaciated. in front of oh, everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm hurting right and now. And you can't give you us a pipe emaciated. shot here. Not, I will not give a pipe oh. shot. You want to see? Uh, you, have you have to come to, to the show. Concert, When's the show? Or the show. It is April 28th. I'm not even going to say the show. Uh, my girlfriend is also competing as a figure competitor. Oh, uh, wow. Which makes it easy. Oh, yeah. You know, because you have two people who totally she, understand what, what you're going through. And she's just as miserable understand. as you because she's You know, Monica does, not, too, right? Monica does not get miserable. She's one of the greatest, happiest people I've ever been around. So it's really helped me instead of being real, real miserable, except for if you ask the players that I got real miserable. Uh, I'm not as miserable. Okay. See, you know? see, see Wolf suffers from, from two eating disorders you know he, he's an amnesic bulimic he gorges himself and he forgets to throw up and then and then he's also got full of phobia uh he's got this intense fear that he's not going to get full and so like when we're at, we're, a at, we're, at, we're, at we're at we're at a restaurant and he's going he's he's pouring over the menu and he's going well if i if this porterhouse is only 36 ounces and 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 and, 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 and but 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 that rack of lamb it's better tasting, but you it's do not. The math. And so you he, he does. He, and so he starts Listen. panicking, and then he goes, "But maybe I'll bring something to go, so I can eat in the hotel room later." You're as bad. I want a chocolate chip cookie so bad right now. It's just 
But well, yeah, I can help you with that. Where's his briefcase? <laughs> Where's his briefcase? We'll carry them around with can him. I take them with him? <laughs> I want to know like when I'm going to be invited to the Center for Martial Arts so I can come train. Uh, Absolutely. You are, you've got a standing invitation. Yeah, you can, he can teach I you how to yoga. <laughs> I just tried to one position and got stuck. I, I think I ripped my pants. Squats and Is those, he going to buy me new jeans? I just ripped my jeans. and I'm not doing Hindu squats. Anything beyond 10 reps. I'm totally alactic, which means nine seconds and less, I'm happy. You know, the only problem that you get into, you get it. No, the worst problem is when you get one of those twisting things and you realize you over you over the thing. The dog. You over yoga yourself. Yeah. He does the dog. You get real, you get all warmed up and then all of a sudden you realize, you know, I've never stretched as deep before. This probably is not going to end good. Buddy, thank Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Appreciate you it's been a true We'd joy. Love to have you you guys again. are great. Right. I love being around you. Thank you very <laughs> much. Uh, good luck the rest of your training before training camp starts and also in your Thank contest. You. Thank We're you. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we have any time left? We're going to close out this show right here in the locker room.